All right, well, in today's video, we're going to do a little bit of maintenance, understanding, repair, a look at what happened to the impulse. So, um, if you remember in the last video, this had the 10 shock motor in it. This had the long 10 shock motor, it was the 2260. Um, and I was testing out the new Speedmaster strut, right? So, I went ahead, I pulled the motor out, and I've got it over here. And the first thing that I did, I was just like, well, the motor, I already know that the motor is, 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 is busted, right? So if we look and we try to take a look, see the dust right there? I believe that is the Kevlar wrapping and it came, came undone. This is the second time this has happened. First time it was covered under warranty. This time I'm honestly just, I don't feel like I should even ask for a warranty at this point. So... All I did was I took it on my carpet and I smacked it straight down like this and I popped the end bell cap off and it literally came off easy peasy lemon squeezy. So I'm going to go ahead slide this off here. I'm going to take my soldering gun. We're going to pull these things off, get this end bell off and pull the rotor out and we're actually going to look on the inside of a 10 shock motor for the very first time. Now, if anybody knows, I, everybody said that these are non-serviceable motors. Um, it seems fairly easy. Just smack it straight down and pop. Came right off. So, let's go ahead and, uh, and get these ends off. Get that rotor out and let's take a peek at it. We went ahead and got the end cap off here. Got the 5.5 mil bullets off. Let's flip this over and look at this side of it. Looks like it's got some sort of white white grease on it or something i don't know what that is it's kind of weird milky substance you know i did put um a little bit of like you know bearing oil on it dripped bearing oil on it but that that actually resembles um grease honestly but you can take a peek here see a little bit of the rotor Okay, now I believe the rotor has failed, so I'm going to have a hard time getting it out of here. Best I can do is smack it down. We can kind of see a little bit of it there. I'm going to go ahead and keep working on it, and I'm going to try to find something that's the same diameter as that, uh, like an Allen wrench or something, and push it out. And, uh, We'll get that rotor out of there. All right, it's kind of cool. I've got this old five millimeter shaft here. This is a uh, part of the old Spartan and it seems to work pretty good. Oh, there's the rotor failure, All right? Smack dab in the center. My expectation was that the center shaft on this thing uh, was making it flex. And I believe maybe my theory is correct. I feel like with the motor being, you know, 90 millimeters long and the shaft being 5 millimeters, that it doesn't have, like, enough strength to keep it perfectly straight. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at that. Broke the magnet. I had noticed a few runs prior to this that um, the motor was running weaker. wasn't didn't have the same power. It didn't have the same RPM. And I noticed on my data logs that the amp draw was a little bit higher. Maybe, you know, 35, 45 amps higher uh, than everything uh, prior to that. But it looks like the wrap let go. And then the magnet uh, came out. Of the rotor because we've got one two three four five six magnets six pole motor six magnets <clears throat> damn it boys that's terrible no bueno you would think that they'd have more uh, wrapping over it. okay well we see the rotor let's go ahead and take a peek Inside the motor. Yikes. That looks disgusting. 
disturbing and disgusting. Yep. I don't know if y'all can actually see in there as well. I don't think the camera's going to focus on that. I'm going to run some water through this and just see if that's part of like the Kevlar wrap, but it really looks like that thing is like destroyed. I'm going to go clean this out. <clears throat> that's terrible. All right. Well, we got it all cleaned out. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can bend these away and give you a better view of this. See if we can go inside. I'm not sure if my camera will actually focus on this or not. Trying to see. Sorry. Wanted to see if, because like the motor had gotten wet, you know, the cooling jacket, the nipples on the cooling jacket popped off, it flooded the boat, the motor got wet. I brought it home, put the fan on it, let it like, you know, dry out. I didn't run the, the motor for probably three weeks just to completely ensure that everything was dry on it. And then um, next time out, we had a failure. So, it's kind of crazy. It's got some crap in it. Um, when I stick my finger in there, it's actually smooth. I don't know if that's like some of the Kevlar wrapping kind of stuck in those little grooves. I might try and clean it out and see if I can scrape that out or not. I don't know if it's total bust or what, but probably, probably a total bust. Because since the magnet failed... That means it made contact with the inside of the motor. <sighs> Don't know, man. Magnet failed. Look at that. Okay. All right. So th this is this is what I'm seeing here. Okay. It looks like looks like we have one magnet here, and then we have one magnet here, and it's like it's pieced together in the middle. The same for this one, the same for that one, the same for that one, the same for that one. So it looks like in the middle, looks like in the middle where the magnets go together, like in my opinion, this should be one solid magnet, you know, but what do I know? I'm not an electric motor engineer. I'm just some guy on YouTube. I'd have to take other motors apart and inspect the rotors to see if they are built similarly or dissimilarly to this. Because that is not a crack. That is legitimately <clears throat> how that is made. And that is where it failed. It's flinging the magnets out. This is what it's doing. Magnets are pulling out of it. So, I don't know. I just felt like uh, at this point, you know, $279 down the drain, I might as well just uh, make a video on it. Like, what's it going to hurt at this point anyways, right? You know, kind of crazy. But I figured nobody has uh, any video on this of inside of a 10 shock motor. So we'll go ahead and, um, you know, show you what happens when you blow one up. 2260, 2100 KV. Down the drain. Down the drain. Yikes. Super yikes. So let's see here. I want to see, make sure, like, it didn't have a bearing failure. No, bearing's okay. It's not the smoothest. Okay, I got smoother there. Yeah, it's spinning. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Bearings are good, so. Bummer. Cool. Well, kind of short, kind of sweet. Can't save it. So, 
there she sits. One expensive mistake. But, I mean, what do you do? I mean, what do you do? <sighs> Alright, guys. Well, leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this or this design or uh, rotors or the magnets typically like that because I've, I haven't blown up enough of these motors. Not, not 10 shock. I'm talking about motors in general. I've never failed a rotor like this uh, except my SVM motor, but my SVM motor didn't come apart. It was just me overheating it. Um, this motor didn't overheat. This motor has always run like 118 degrees, like spot on the money. So I guess, um, you know, 22, 24 volts, uh, 38,000 RPM. It just doesn't like it in an extended amount of time. So kind of crazy. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Peace out.